the legal department. Um, and with that being said, uh, I would like to um, take a vote from the members for the approval of the minutes from February's meeting. All of those who are in favor, um, please raise your hand. I'll make a motion before you entertain that, please. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Joe. Okay, I will move that we approve the, our meeting minutes from the previous meeting. All second. And seconded by Dan, thank you. How about now we can vote? All of those in favor? And any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that looks like that's unanimous. And now we'll move on to uh, our Cherho Interact Clubs Black History Month virtual event presentation by our very own Sarah Rubenstein. You now have the floor. Well, Sabrina, I'm just unmuting you. So you I'm can sorry, Sabrina. There we go. And um, this was put on the agenda. Uh, Joe Reddish had suggested it. So, so uh, Sabrina did a very, uh, an excellent job last week. One day I was, I was lucky enough to attend um, her presentation. So um, as Mr. Reddish was one of the speakers at that presentation. So Sabrina, um, are you able to unmute? I wanna make sure. No, hold on, try that again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Uh, so first of all, I want to apologize. I'm a little under the weather, so I sound a little froggy. But so during Black History Month, I wanted to organize something that really brought a voice to everyone in the community and gave people an opportunity to gather together and hear about Black history, Black culture, and, you know, just really have a chance to open, open up and have a conversation. Um, so our humanities Director uh, Miss Dana Hall helped me organize this, and it was a Zoom meeting. And you know, obviously, because of the pandemic, we couldn't have anything in person. But this actually worked out really well. Um, we had four guest speakers, including Mr. Joe Reddish. So thank you for attending. Um, it's it was really awesome. We actually recorded it, so it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. Um, it's under my name, so it's Sabrina Munoz Rubenstein, and I can put the link somewhere that everyone can find it. But it was a really awesome event. We had a lot of interaction between the audience members and I was getting a little nervous at the beginning actually because we were like, okay, like opening up for questions and comments and like, it kind of just went silent. And I was like, oh my God, no one's gonna say anything. And I was like, I don't wanna have to be the one that asks the first question. And then um, one of the girls was like, you know what, I, I like, I love Tiara Mack, like she's so incredible. And just like after that, everything really flowed so well. And it really opened up the conversation as to what people can do as allies to the Black and African American community. And I think that's really important within Cheriho, considering that a lot of the students don't come from, you know, households that are Black or pretty much any ethnicity other than white. So it was really awesome for people to see and hear these awesome black stories and you know how people that are our neighbors are living and to just learn more about the people around us. So um, my, at this point, um, we can ask if there's any questions regarding uh, Sabrina's presentation. If you want to raise your hand on Zoom, at the bottom of your screen, you should see one or two buttons, a reactions button. If you click on that, it should say raise hand, not the applause, but it has the claps, but the raise hand. And then in the more, in the more section, you can find it there for the raise hand. Um, or you can go to the participants list and next to your name, there'll be a more button and there it'll say raise hand as well, depending sometimes on the Zoom update that you have. But if you wish to speak, um, that would be how the uh, we would know that you have um, a comment about what you just heard or a question regarding the presentation from Sabrina. I don't see any hands raised. Does anybody have any questions or comments about Sabrina's um, event that she held? Miss Lisa. 
Um, Sabrina, since we have so many community members on the on the call today, could you just go back to the beginning and just kind of maybe define the, the club a little bit and just share the mission? So we understand the event, which sounds wonderful, but why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the broader work that you do and, and kind of the mission um, uh, and how people could participate if they were interested? Okay, um, so this originally was planned as an interact event, but due to like having to get everything approved, we kind of just, you know, took interact out of it, but interact is mainly a community service club. Um, we pretty much just do outreach projects. We did a canned food drive at the beginning of the school year. We're planning something for March, which is a pot of gold dash. So pretty much it's going to be like a relay race around the track and people, you know, teams of four pay money to race and then we're raising money for charity. So it's a lot of charity events, a lot of community service things, raising money, collecting food, things like that. Um, really just being members of the community that people can count on to do the right thing almost. And one of the things we did in February was um, a bathroom revamp project. So we got all of Interact together at the school, um, social distancing and masks, of course, but we decorated all of our school bathrooms and we also collected um, menstrual products. So we put menstrual products within the um, girls' bathrooms so that they were accessible for free to the students because a lot of us agreed that, you know, that time of the month can be kind of stressful for girls and it really shouldn't be in a school environment. So we wanted to really do something that would be positive and memorable for the rest of the school year, considering how stressed everyone has been. And, you know, that's one thing that people can kind of get off their plates. So yeah, it's just a lot of community service, a lot of, you know, community events and just getting people together to have fun and just do things for others. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Does anyone else have any um, questions or comments? I don't see any hands. I'm not seeing any. Okay. I'm not seeing any. So we're gonna move. like Katie has a hand up. Oh, I oh, thought no. she was clapping. <laughs> no, no, it's a clap. She was clapping, I thought oh. she was clapping. I don't know my Zoom signals. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> next up, excuse me, I'm right with you, Sabrina, not, I'm not all there today. Um, next we have the, um, anti-racism task force draft webpage proposal to the school committee and Ms. Picard, I believe is going to tell us about that. Yes. Last, uh, meeting the task force, um, was thinking about ways to sort of, um, interest in, um, the webpage right now, the only thing on the webpage is our link to the meetings uh, and our videos of previous meetings. So at this point, uh, we're looking, so I can give feedback to the school committee on the kinds of information that you would like to see on that page so that we could, um, we could review it with them for at the, as the task force members or, or a community, I guess, either way, Maya, we could, I don't know if there's any hands or any, any uh, task force members have all the task force members should be co-hosts, should be able to unmute themselves or unmute any member who's raising their hand too. So. I'm not seeing any hands. Oh, I'll Dan. Just, uh, jump in. I just, I, you know, thank yeah. you for um, some of those edits. I thought, you know, I did look quickly. I thought everything seemed really accessible. Um, so certainly interested if, if folks think differently, but I thought, um, the information there, it was really easy to look back and be able to view our previous meetings and sign up for this meeting. Um, so I just want to say thank you that that's um, easy to find all in one place, um, rather than having to go to the Secretary of State site or anything like that. So Maya, the, um, the task force members wouldn't raise their hands. They can just unmute themselves because they don't, they're the task force members. Right. Okay, I just wanted to be sure. Um, I was just gonna suggest um, any, if task force members might be interested to offer any blurb about themselves um, in terms of why they were interested in, in joining or any 
I know when we submitted our interest to, to join, we did say a bit about our background. I know it can get rather lengthy. So um, again, a sentence or two um, about education, role in the district, if you are an employee, just kind of basic qualifiers, if anyone is, um, for those who are interested and comfortable in offering that information. We do have one hand. I see, um, uh, Joe. You're on the task force. All you have, you should. Oh, you're not a co-host, Joe. Hold on. We will fix that for you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Joe Lopes. I am the ESL teacher for the district, and I've been at Charter Ho for 28 years. And I just thought that it, this is great work that needs to be done, and that's why I joined the task force. Okay, I'm hearing you say what, what your recommendation would be like a, a blurb or it's like a testimonial of some sort. Of like why? Well, I, I've obviously um, my work, I work with students who are from um, other cultures and speak other languages. And I felt that um, my part participation in the committee was vital. And that's why I joined. So piggybacking off of what, um, Joe just offered having information like that to people's level, level of comfort on the website um, might also offer more than just a name, you know, the names of the task force members. Um, so that was beautiful, Joe, if you wanted to capture that somehow for the, for the website um, and anyone, anyone else based on their level of comfort. Yeah, it's, I'd what, love to do that. What will happen is I will provide sort of a, recommendations of what we want that to look like at the and, and put it on an agenda for the next for the school committee meeting to review to see if there's anything else they believe uh, um, as they hear from the community or be helpful on that page as well. Maya, we have one hand raised, Edda Zasloff. Miss Edda, I'm trying to unmute you. Oh, here we go. Mute myself here. Okay, I'm unmuted. Um, yes, I'm Edda Zasloff. I'm a retired teacher from Terre Haute. Um, I worked at the middle school for 10 years, retired in 2014. Very interested in this topic and very happy that you're talking about the website because I encountered some difficulty in finding the information uh, to begin with. Um, so I, I, I hope that you do pursue, you know, making this web page a little more enticing. I think this is such an important topic that, you know, maybe even needs some graphics or something, a, a, a description of how it came about. I was at the school committee meeting when it was approved, proposed by Lisa and approved and very happy to see. So I was aware of it. Um, and read about it in the paper, but still, I, I think a, a link from the front page on this topic would be really critical, so that you don't have to go to the calendar or wherever to, you know, hunt it down. Um, I do know there's a lot of interest in the community, and I think that when we get the message out there in a positive way, hopefully we can. Ah, sorry. <laughs> we can minimize uh, some of the negativity uh, that, you know, is brewing. I think that we're all going to have to work together to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zaslav. Mm -hmm. and I, wanna, um, I just want to add to what um, Edda was saying. Um, I'm Heidi Fee. I teach at Charlestown School um, for a really long time. And I am thrilled to be on this committee because I also feel that it's important work, especially working with young children. Um, little kids don't show up on the planet um, being racist. We create that. And I think that making positive steps towards inclusivity is going to make a difference in our whole world. Um, I'm also aware that there are people that feel concerned about this. And um, I'm here to tell you that we want to promote nothing but um, peace between everybody. Um, and I don't think there's anything to be concerned about, but I like the fact that maybe we'll put more of a message on the website so people have a better understanding of what we're all about. So that's all I wanted to say. Maya, Caleb. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. 
Caleb? It's a juicy answer. Okay. Unmute again. Thank you. Uh, Heidi essentially said it for me. I just wanted to voice the fact that I, I think it does get confusing as a task force to try and do all the work that everybody is doing um, without getting, I feel like there was almost a benefit to being a small group at first, not in any sort of exclusive way, but it just kind of organically happened that way. Um, because we could dive in, you guys could dive in quickly and do so much work. Um, and I don't want to distract from or add to the task force plate in doing community relations. Um, and I know that it, that's kind of a delicate dance to walk as a task force because you have so much on your plates and you're not, you know, it shouldn't be your job to dispel misinformation, but Heidi kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of the, the website, as long as it's easily accessible and as long as it has some uh, information on there to dispel some of the myths, I think that's I think that's a big piece of the work is just saying this is what we're about, this is what we're working on, um, and as much or as little as you guys want from there. But I started reflecting that having a website that's inaccessible feeds that um, that uh, that myth machine that says, oh, these guys are clandestine and you know they're just wanting to take away our rights and whatever, which is completely opposite from what um, the task force is. So. Um, and just in general, as always, thank you guys for all you're doing. I know you're working ridiculously hard to do all that you do. So thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Joe. Yeah, um, just wanted to share, um, I've been part of this community for 28 years. I sat on the, the SIT um, um, committee way back when, when it was in the back room of the middle school and Barry Ritchie was assistant superintendent planning where the school district is today. Um, one of the most important things that I think we need to remember is we go through this process, it's kind of like baking a cake. If we take all the ingredients, um, they don't taste good by themselves. Um, but when we get them all mixed up and slowly baking, and we're going to have something that's really great. Um, I look at our community, and I've used this analogy on quite a few things, as kind of a diamond. Um, a diamond in the rough right now um, because we have many facets of our community and that's what we're exploring and truly tr really trying to figure out how do we um, make all those facets shine because we know the value of a diamond and I think women can uh, attest to this and some men can attest to this the, the value of the diamond is when all the facets shine through and I think um, this group is put together and I think focus really well on that my background, for those who know, I come, I'm born and raised California. I was raised, I started off in schools that were segregated. Um, and I went to an elementary school, which is one of the first ones that were desegregated. My dad actually wrote the desegregation plan for the school district in which they were. My mom's retired principal of 37 years in elementary. My dad was a guidance chairman at high school for 47 years. But I was once a student. I am now a resident that watches students um, and learns from students. And I think the most important thing is, is communication. Um, assumptions are a dangerous thing and asking questions is okay, but make sure you ask the right people so that you get the answer of really what's going on. And I think the website will help with that, but I encourage anybody that has any questions about anything is just ask the question, or maybe we put on the website a spot so if somebody can ask a question, then we can answer that question publicly so that we have a series of questions that take place. And so kind of like a Q&A, um, it's a continuous growth opportunity, but I think it's important that we have to step back. Um, and there's something Martin Luther King said, and I don't have the exact term, you know, quote in front of me right now, but it was to put, a, put aside our individualisms needs our needs and look at the greater steps for humanity in this case look at the greater opportunity for our school district and our communities together which is called charco thank you thank you joe caleb did you just raise your hand no no okay no. caleb was raised in the roof i think oh 
Yeah. See, I don't know that one. Or something. I forgot that one. Yeah. Um, so, so chair, I would and superintendent, I, I would like to make two suggestions for the website, both of which will be kind of previewed in my in report later. So I hope that everyone's on the call remains. One is that I, I think we need to lead with um, the website with our a reminder of what our mission, what the task force mission is. Like, what was the motion that was approved? And right, it was to form a ta an anti-racism task force with the express purpose of examining our curriculum practices and policies through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think that needs to be the header. So the first landing page when people come there is, right, a settling reminder of, of what our focus is. And it's just that. It's just that curriculum, policy, practice. And I think that will help clarify that this is not, uh, there, there is no politics in that mission. It, it's those three areas and those three areas alone. I think that needs to be clear. I think that needs to be followed by a welcome to the community, which I think is similar to what Caleb and Joe were kind of just alluding to, right? Calling people in, not calling people out, right? We're calling them in. I think thirdly, we need to have um, a, 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 a section that actually has shared defined terms. Again, I'll talk more about this in my report shortly. I'm gonna go over two specific terms for the community, but that's a lot of the misunderstanding is do we, are we all, when we all say anti-racism, are we all talking about a combined and shared definition of that? If we're coming at that with different definitions, then we're not doing our work. We are not doing our work to educate. When we talk about decolonization, right? What, what feeling does that give two thirds of this population if they don't understand, if we're not defining it together and saying in this context, this is the term that we're working with. So I think that the task force should come up with a handful of terms that are defined right on the website. So even if they're different someplace else in some other conversation or some other book somewhere, in our space, this is what we mean when we say. Um, and then and then to I'm gonna just push a little bit, Joe, on the on the question and answer piece. I do want to say that the that those who want to contribute are welcomed and should be called in but they do have to come in. And I think we have to be cognizant to not have conversations happening in darkness online. We come cameras on, open-hearted, transparent, ready to have a conversation. I feel that those questions should come in the same way. I would like these meetings to remain as accessible as possible for as long as possible, which means we should always have a Zoom link. So every participant who, can, who wants to make it can make it with no barriers. Thus, if you have a question, there is a responsibility to come and have the conversation. And I would like to elevate us out of those um, small dark spaces. I, I don't wanna get screenshots of, of questions. I, I want people. And so we can have a conversation. So, so those are my, my thoughts on, on the website. I, I hope you'll consider them. Thank you, Lisa. Were there any more questions or comments? Not at this time. Okay. Um, we're gonna move on to our subcommittee reports um, and we're gonna start with our policy subcommittee. So who within our policy subcommittee wants to go ahead and give us their report? Hello, um, I can kick us off. Um, the policy subcommittee um, is comprised of myself, Dartula, Joe, and Indonis. Um, so we've met a few times since the last time. Um, and just for a reminder for folks, we, I believe, are on the agenda for March 9th to provide a brief progress report to the school committee. Um, so we're, our, most of our focus right now has been on preparing for that. So I don't know, I do have the our draft slides. Would that be helpful if I quickly show those? Um, That'd be a good I idea for them to see. All right, well, I will do that real quick. And anybody from the, the policy um, group, feel free to jump in. Um, so I believe you all should be able to see my screen very good, yes. Beautiful, okay. So we're gonna jump in um, because this is our first time, the first, uh, each committee will be going to the school committee um, separately just because we wanna make sure we have ample time for 
um, you know, feedback from the school committee, because again, um, you know, as Lisa just mentioned, kind of leading with what was our charge, what did the school committee pass, um, and what was their intentions, that's what created this uh, group of us here today, talk a little bit about kind of where we went from there, how we've operated, um, about how, you know, we split off into some working groups to really discuss diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice from the lens of policy practices in curriculum. Um, so once we go through that kind of groundwork, we have a kind of very simplistic overview of where our kind of thought trajectories have been in the policy space. And, and once again, um, you know, just kind of reminding folks that our, um, as Maya mentioned in the beginning, um, leading with the idea that our charge as a task force is to provide well thought through recommendations um, by the end of the school year to the school committee. So these, you know, are our thoughts about where we think our recommendations will go. Um, so I'll do a quick recap of those and feel free anybody to jump in. Tier one, kind of those things that are kind of the low, lower, um, you know, topics that we could really dive right into right now, um, recommending the creation of a true diversity statement for the school district. Um, and examining and kind of crafting a more thought out discrimination policy for the student handbooks throughout the district. Um, the second um, tier kind of the things that are a little, more, you know, take a little more either resources, usually being more like human resources and, and time and, and thought to do this, but to examine and update the Cheriho student handbook through an anti-racism lens to better ensure clear proactive and responsive efforts around diversity, equity, inclusion. And, and a lot of our thoughts on um, the policy work group have really been around, uh, you know, just the way that we communicate these things and making it really easy to read and comprehend through that, um, that handbook. And then the last one that we'll kind of talk about to get feedback from the school committee at our progress report next week will be the tier three um, that we, we believe what our, you know, tier three recommendation would be um, to recommend the school committee um, write a policy ensuring ongoing professional development related to diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice for all faculty, staff, and administration. Um, so really an intentional thought out piece around that. Um, so from there, actually I'll pause for a second. Um, any, and Donis, Joe, or Dertula, any thoughts I, I would here? Just, I would just add, uh, say again, these are recommendations, which is what the task force has been uh, created to do is to try and gather information um, and bring it back to the school committee um, for them to review for whatever they choose to do as far as implementation. Um, our purpose is not to um, try and implement policy. It is just to provide recommendations and some guidance um, from the information that we get from um, when we do our research. Yep. Any add-ins? All right. And then, you know, and our, we're really hoping we kind of tried to streamline this so we could really focus our, our time on the 9th of really opening that up for feedback um, from the school committee. Um, so we kind of will close off with um, an idea. Uh, oop, and Donis, I saw that you raised your hands. Or raise your hand. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Motioning frantically to unmute. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, uh, just to kind of reiterate what, what Daniel and, and Joe were both speaking about, we are really providing a progress report. We don't want to kind of come out of left field with some really broad recommendations. This is a constructive process, and we want to be focused on kind of the processual nature of providing a beginning starting point, having a discussion, letting that discussion inform and shape recommendations that are good for everybody. Um, so we really wanted to kind of um, emphasize that part of the process that this is really coming with. Um, these, this is where the directions we're going in, these are the thoughts we're having, these are discussions, the nature of the discussions we're having, and we want input and we want that input to guide and shape. Um, the, the outcome. 
such a good point. And I, and I also think too of, I was realizing as we were, you know, preparing for this, that we even since the school committee voted to create the anti-racism task force, we have some new folks who make up our school committee. So really taking that point, like you mentioned, and Donna's and really checking in and um, providing that point of this is where our thought trajectories are welcoming that feedback. And then as you see on this slide, letting them know that you'll be hearing from the practices and the curriculum work groups and at future um, school committee meetings. And that as a full anti-racism task force that we'll assess all of that feedback and really work that into um, the creation of formal recommendations. And that our thoughts right now will be that we'll have um, an initial list of thought out written recommendations to the school committee around those topics of policy and practice. Um, and curriculum. Um, kind of start and end with kind of a quote just to kind of ground our um, our conversation there and of course um, spend the, the majority of the time um, being able to discuss their, their feedbacks, their questions um, from there. So I'll, I can't really, I can't see cameras so I'm going to stop sharing and see if there's any other questions or thoughts there. Oh yeah, I see Dartula. Hello there, everyone. Um, so I just wanted to say very briefly because I strongly feel like if we have some awesome individuals who are already sharing some great information, there's no need to just continue to talk about it. <laughs> um, but we are very serious about making sure that whatever recommendations that we're putting forward is based on data and facts. So it's not about what we think about how we're feeling. It's about data and it's the data coming from the school. So coming from our district. So it's not about what's happening in any other area um, that's driving our recommendations. And we're going to definitely make sure we speak to the leaders in the schools as we're collecting the data and hearing about their perspective and understanding and student perspective and understanding. It's just, just to reiterate, it's, it's about data and facts. And I, I think that's so important. I think through all of this work that it's, um, there's a lot to, to kind of wade through. And, and I know our first few meetings, we requested a lot of information from the school district and that was really helpful in our, in our initial thoughts. So yeah, I look forward to, to continuing that. That's a great point. Yeah, unless there's um, any other questions there about our format or anything, but encourage you all to uh, come and, and hear what we hope is a really fruitful conversation on the 9th um, to the public school committee meeting. Um, and we're really, really excited to give them the progress report, hear their feedback, and then kind of go back to, um, you know, our... Um, you know, our process as a working group to really sift through all that information, and of course, bring that here to the full anti-racism task force. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Dar Dartula and Indonis. Um, we're going to move on to the practices subcommittee. And who is going to speak on the practices subcommittee's behalf? I could do the, the same thing if that would be helpful. And I know there's a couple pages of screens. I don't know, I don't see Katie, Carla or Thon just yet. Oh, there's I see Katie. them. Yep, and you then, do. Okay, you great. See. So They're I would be, you. <laughs> um, so I'll share the, we, so um, the practices committee will, is planning to, um, meet with the school committee um, or present to the school committee on the 23rd. So that's an also before our next full anti-racism task force meeting. So we, um, these are draft slides, but I can share that as well. And then anyone from the work group, feel free to jump in, uh, share, make sure I'm just, a, just a reminder to the practices subcommittee, you can unmute yourself at any time. and I'm not sharing my screen yet. Um, there we go, okay. You would think a year in, we would know how Zoom works, but. Okay, so as you'll see, um, started with a couple you know, different, different quotes, but we started with kind of the same information in the beginning, just in case there's folks who are 
um, who weren't at the meeting on the 9th, who are going to be there on the 23rd. Um, and then where it really changes is here on the practices slide. So I'm happy to go through it, um, but um, Katie, Carla, or Thon, anybody want to go? I don't want to speak over. Oh, yep, Thon. I see your hands raised. I, no, I'm I think he was just showing that he was here. Um, oh, Dan, okay. if you if you want to want to begin, and I can I can jump in as well. Sure. Yeah. No problem. Um, so for the tier one recommendations, um, we have this split out onto three different slides, um, and again, wanting to. Um, lead with what you see there underlined that these are the recommendations, um, the kind of initial thoughts around where we think our formal recommendations will be. But our tier one recommendations currently are around continuing to make the school committee meetings accessible to all through virtual access. So um, while this touches upon a lot of other issues beyond kind of the, the scope of the anti-racism task force, we do think that it's been a really incredible um, way for all members of our community to access our school committee meetings to access like tonight we have um, such a great showing from the community. So we wanted a recommendation on continuing to make that accessible through things like zoom. Um, we also talked about considering making a permanent subcommittee um, that would work under the school committee dedicated to a lot of the issues that we're talking about around diversity, equity, inclusion and justice. Um, currently, um, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but currently as a task force that's meant to be more um, short term with a real end goal. And I think as we just talked about with our charge, there is kind of a real end goal. We're, you know, crafting those initial recommendations, but we think to have a permanent subcommittee that could continue to talk about how issues related to diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice intersect with our school district would be really important. Um, and then we talked about our third one would be considering formalizing practices and expectations around a variety of student facing, facing topics. So we as a work group have um, been working on a whole bunch of different kind of thoughts around um, ideas. We did highlight two examples that we wish to um, kind of share and get feedback from the school district on. Um, graduation procedures. So for example, allowing um, cultural acknowledgements, um, for example, for our tribal students who are graduating, allowing um, them to really showcase um, different cultural aspects um, of that really celebratory event. Um, and then the second kind of example being some classroom based practices. Um, and one concrete example for that would be ensuring when possible that our BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and people of color uh, students are not isolated when classroom selections are determined. Um, and I know a member of our group talked about how I believe Charlestown Elementary School actually did that really well. Um, and for that ex example, thinking of, you know, while we have a really, sometimes a really small number of students of color um, in our district and in our classrooms, um, that originally the school was, um, and not with bad intentions, but separating them, a lot of our students of color out. So you'd have uh, maybe just one per classroom. And um, rather than having our students be so isolated about really thinking and being intentional and um, and how we're grouping students. And um, I'll stop there if anybody from Katie, Thon, or Carla, if you want to jump in at all before we move over to two. Well, I just speak on that one. Uh, and that there was a letter that was sent out, and I think it was used and used well. Like you said, uh, definitely I witnessed it within Charleston Elementary, where um, absolutely that um, though it is diversifying to separate out, it also, as you said, can definitely leave um, children feeling isolated and like, I'm, I'm the only one. Uh, mm -hmm. I think by indigenous students with long hair, they're the only, maybe the only boy with long hair and braids coming into school. And, and so uh, by putting them together, it, it, it truly allows them to feel more confident in, in identity. And you're doing great. Well, I, I unmuted earlier because it wouldn't let me unmute. I was raising my hand trying, but you're oh, doing no awesome. 
<laughs> Thank you, Don. Um, and, and I think getting back to Dartula's point earlier about making data informed recommendations, that's been a conversation specifically we've been having in the practices work group too. Um, you know, the the student grouping, for example, that is rooted in, in, in data about how that directly impacts the the um, the impact on education, for example, obviously through our lens here at the school district. So really excited to have that that conversation and make that a formal recommendation. All right, so moving on to tier two recommendations. Um, these again are kind of the things that take a little bit more time, little thought, a little more resources um, around like kind of time. Um, we talked about, um, and I think getting back to the policy work group that I think you'll hear, especially as I think you'll hear the curriculum work group um, talk more. There's so much um, overlap between policies, practices, and curriculum. So some of the solutions, solutions to practices-based recommendations would be a policy. Um, this, I think, will actually help inform um, some of the policy um, recommendations, but basically the practices work group is talking about recommending that there's a review of discipline practices within the district and considering any policy or handbook revisions as needed. Um, so what that would look like is reviewing a discipline practices throughout the district, including referrals and disciplinary action um, by a variety of demographics. So beyond, you know, sex and race, but also thinking about for students with IEPs and, and, and further um, you know, demographics there. So really understanding what happens between our, our policy, how does that look like, and, and probably looking back, not just on the, the 2020 school year, because obviously that's looked very different for all of us, um, but looking a school year back to really understand what that's looked like over time. Um, and then that second bullet, sub bullet under that first recommendation um, is using that insight that we gained from that kind of that um, equity audit, if you will, to consider potential policy and handbook revisions from there. Um, and then our next one, we've had a lot of conversations about equitable guidance. Um, so our thoughts here um, are really around our, you know, we have some really incredible guidance. Um, staff and a really great guidance office within our school district, but ensuring that that guidance office is equipped with adequate resources and training to truly serve a diverse student body. So thinking about, you know, understanding resources about HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, or understanding where funds are, or opportunities outside of higher education, or getting into the workforce, so really understanding, um, you know, as they're, they're doing for our student body, but really ensuring that they have the adequate resources to truly serve our, our diverse student body. Um, and then our third tier two recommendation would be to create an adventure, an avenue, <laughs> adventure, um, to create an avenue for external feedback on curriculum concerns. Um, so this adventure, if you will, um, would really be, I think it, it sounds more formal than it is, but, um, we we know that the district ha and the in the state has a robust curriculum um, review process internally, but we talked about externally. What is the practice of let's say a parent, a teacher, a student, a community member um, has a concern with an assignment or a question or thinks something should be updated? Is there a current way? Um, and nobody we we had talked to truly knew if there was, but a way to capture that. So what we thought the um, answer could be, a recommendation would be to create a feedback form that was one at the elementary, one middle school, one at the high school levels, capturing also um, the career and tech program as well, that would catalog community parents student feedback to use during the district's curriculum review process. So basically, when that robust process starts internally, where our, our administration and our staff start to review curriculum on that um, revolving calendar, that they would have this, this information, this data that was submitted from the, you know, over the, the years between um, that they could use in between. So hopefully that came out clearer than I think I just said it, but <laughs> any, any thoughts there before we get into our, our last tier? Um, I was just going to offer on the, the last point, and you've been summarizing our conversation so beautifully, uh, Dan, so thank you. But in terms of the external feedback, 
um, you know, I, I um, teach in higher ed and we have a similar process for a lot of the online courses that I teach where there's just like a button right there where we can click if we have a concern, um, you know, related to even just links not working or something of that nature. But it spawned a conversation about, you know, what would a community member do other than email perhaps the administrator for the building saying, I have a concern on this assignment and, you know, here's my concern. Um, but having a centralized place to curate those concerns. So when it becomes time or when it, when it comes time to do revision, the team that's working on that revision could easily sort and review those um, and move forward because it may be several years before that revision happens. Obviously, if there's any urgent change that's needed, I'm sure there's a process for taking care of that. But I think there might be really great community parent, guardian, et cetera, student feedback on some classroom um, lessons or pieces of curriculum that, that could be captured and documented and help inform the revision process. Um, so this was nothing more than perhaps suggesting some, some place to help um, collect that information for, for use when the time is right versus relying on our memory of saying like, oh, that assignment you know, needs some consideration or this you know, um, lesson needs to be reviewed, um, having a place where all that information is, is documented for, for proper use um, by the group. Yeah, great point. And, and then, of course, getting back to kind of our, our last conversation, too, about website, making sure that that's accessible, that folks know where to find it. Um, so, yeah, really, uh, really great capturing of that conversation. Beautiful. And in our last um, kind of tier three, kind of, you know, a lot more effort in, in kind of combining things together to make this happen. Um, these recommendations would be as followed. So we would consider way, we would recommend that the school consider ways to actively recruit and retain a more diverse staff. Um, and our kind of goal there would be, our recommendation would be for the school to better align our staff demographics with our student body, um, especially with our st uh, student facing staff, our administration, our, our, our educators, um, our, you know, or support staff, guidance, you know, deans, things like that. So really um, looking at not, you know, of course we know that um, the school district is an equal opportunity employer, but really taking that a step further. So our recommendation was would be to actively recruit um, and work from there to, um, you know, intentionally work to retain the, the diverse um, staff there. Then from there, and we think, you know, of course, as we're, we're talking more about that, I think there's a lot more sub bullets as we start really flushing out this recommendation about professional um, groups that are, are, you know, that we could tap into or, um, you know, where we could um, work to promote, you know, listings, um, things along that line. Also around um, and even, you know, getting back to the data informed um, discussions that we've been talking about, understanding what is, you know, what's it like for our, um, you know, diverse workforce? What is it, you know, for our BIPOC educators, um, tapping and understanding what workplace culture is like to better inform how we can not just recruit, but also retain. And then finally, um, finding ways to establish and formalize relationships between the district and the Narragansett tribe. Um, this could look a lot of different ways. We could have, um, you know, 20 different sub bullets under here, but we've had a lot of really fruitful conversations, everything from investing, um, again, in a paid liaison role between the district and, and the tribe. Um, we've even had conversations of, um, you know, for our tribal students who are, who are graduating from our district um, to see, you know, key members of the tribe there at graduation. So there's lots of different ways that, of course, we're, um, I think it's one of the beautiful things about our, our community is where, you know, we're three different towns where, where the tribe all coming together um, across all of this different geography into um, our, you know, incredible school district. So how can we kind of better formalize um, some of those relationships we, we already have. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to any other members from the, the work group and see if you have anything to add. I have nothing else to add, and, and I think um, you did a wonderful job. And thank you for for leading the helm with both 
policy and practices, but it captures our, our you know, conversations um, and really enjoyable discussion that we've been having around these, I think, important um, topics to, to bring recommendations in ways that the school committee might consider moving forward. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. The, the worker we've had such fruitful ongoing conversations. So it's hard to, you know, I think important, but hard to stop, boil it down to a really digestible progress report. Um, but I'm really excited to get feedback from the school committee so that we can get back to, you know, our working groups and really dive in. Um, so yeah, thank you for all the, all the committee members who have been so helpful in moving this forward. Um, and then... Yeah. The, thank you. <laughs> so hopefully captured it well. Um, and again, finishing off, making sure we let the school committee know where we hope the conversation will go and, and when we'll get them recommendations. Um, finishing off with just an, you know, kind of a reminder about kind of where we are, where we're going um, and what it takes to, to make that happen. So I will stop sharing and look, there's all these people again. So great to see you, but I'll hand it back over to you, Maya. Thank you, Dan. Uh, those slides are amazing. Um, I, I don't know, were you in touch with the curriculum um, subcommittee as well? So that when we presented to the school committee, everything is as fantastic. The, uh, by draft, these were like finishing touches today. So yes, our, our intentions are to send the, the kind of mo the template over to um, the curriculum work group so that we can have, so they can use that and, and go. So I would be happy to send that template over um, that way. Yeah, we feel, uh, you know. I just always think that direction. whole uniformity and yeah, Lisa had sure. mentioned that when we were talking about presenting to the school committee. Um, it's just, you know, it makes it easier. They know that they're looking at um, the same group. Was there any, um, any questions or anybody else have any input for after, um, I was trying to keep an eye on everybody's hand. Um, okay, so I think we'll move on to the curriculum subcommittee. Okay, so uh, the uh, curriculum subcommittee nominated me to do the um, uh, report out. And uh, as discussed, we don't have the uh, template yet, but we did agree uh, to use it. So um, we will certainly be putting our recommendations in uh, to that format for the subcommittee presentation, which I believe we are presenting April 2nd. I think, oh, 13th, I think I saw it in Donna. Second one, I think the 13th. <laughs> Sorry, I've, I've been all, having all kinds of issues remembering the right dates these days. Um, but yeah, so April 13th, we'll be presenting to the school committee our recommendations. And um, so I can just kind of give you a high level overview, but you know, same, um, I think it was really important what Dartula mentioned, and I really appreciate that, that our recommendations are also coming from data. Um, so that's a really important uh, aspect as well. And um, so we, we've set up our recommendations in terms of tiers. Uh, tier one would be to, um, the recommendation is to create a statement tied to the mission and vision for uh, decolonization of education. And again, you know, we can talk through the definitions there, but it's really about, um, you know, the, the anti-racism lens, the, the decolonization lens, meaning, um, you know, utilizing resources from our our, uh, indigenous peoples um, of the country and of this area um, to inform uh, the curriculum. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just kind of um, paraphrasing that definition. I'm sure we're going to talk about it later because it's on the agenda, but I, I, that's the sentiment there. Um, for our tier two recommendation, um, you know, uh, we learned fairly recently um, that the school had adopted uh, a new curriculum and um, we, because of the sort of timelines about curriculum uh, revisions that we learned about, uh, we thought it would be good to take uh, newly adopted um, curricula and do a gap assessment between what we've just um, brought on board and um, what we think 
is maybe missing, like what 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 the gaps are in terms of uh, an anti-racism and decolonization lens. So uh, there would be an assessment phase, and uh, we think that we could make a recommendation for the um, for how to conduct the gap assessment. And our recommendation would be to obviously have uh, BIPOC involvement in the creation of the gap assessment tool. And uh, similar to what Dan was talking about, some type of uh, student evaluations um, that you know maybe we could even have that. Uh, included in sort of the grades for for the um, for each course I, again just kind of you know that we, we've got our recommendations but you know we may not go dig down to that level of specificity that was just kind of the idea around that uh, tier two recommendation Tier three um, would include the recommendation for uh, a resource center that would be created for teachers of all grade levels to have access to uh, resources for, um, you know, incorporating the perspectives of, um, you know, multiple uh, populations, marginalized communities, um, indigenous peoples, etc. And it could be applied to any discipline. Um, obviously, you know, uh, age appropriate and, um, and, and be applied immediately, you know, the resources are there at hand. Um, we talked about that being also available to the broader community as well, because um, again, despite being the curriculum task force, we feel like, you know, sort of the, that mission statement that we talked about in tier one um, includes the community aspect of, um, you know, our school district. Um, within that resource center, we talked about maybe having some access to uh, native languages. Um, you know, we've got resources for language learning um, there and um, different opportunities uh, for that. So, you know, um, there was an example given of a university that um, has their signs and um, like directions around campus, not only in English, but also in indigenous languages as well. Um, and then also like availability of local history. Um, so uh, Narragansett tribal history, uh, you know, there's there's so much information and it's so relevant to this area. Um, and similarly, you know, going back through um, the back to the Revolutionary War, right? And um, and our Black communities in this area, you know, there's a significant amount of history that you know it's right it's right here. So um, you know that uh, resource center would incorporate all of those things. Um, and then we've got some sort of like. Um, uh, other ideas that that would eventually kind of feed into these recommendations, um, uh, but but basically um, the one of the underlying mechanisms that we would see being applied to all three tiers um, and just correct curriculum generally would be this um, anti racism and decolonization um, that's scaffolded. And again, you know, I talked about like age appropriateness and through the different grade levels, um, you know, that's the idea is to, to um, start when the kids are entering the school district with some of these, um, you know, history lessons and um, diverse perspectives and then just build on that as they progress through the school system. Um, we also talked about uh, incorporating some type of performance expectations and metrics so that we can also um, ensure continuous improvement within the curriculum. Um, so maybe identifying some type of metrics or using those gap assessments to help understand whether or not we're actually driving um, the changes that we're looking to drive or, or, or drive the progress that we're hoping to make in these areas. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think, I don't know how we'll put this into our presentation, but we also, as a, as a subcommittee, talked about our timelines and how, um, you know, it's, it's a very specific point of view to think of this, um, 
uh, what do I want to say, this, this progress or this direction for the school district um, through, the t through the lens of, you know, well, my kids are in kindergarten now. So, you know, in 18 years, I don't have to worry about this. Um, you know, that's kind of a, a skewed way to look uh, at it, but if you um, sort of follow the um, a lot of the ideologies in the indigenous populations, where the idea is to think many generations down the road, uh, I, I think that also helps kind of set the tone for some of this work. Where you know we may not be able to overnight have a perfect uh, anti-racist uh, curriculum, but um, it, it's it doesn't mean the work isn't worth doing. Um, so I, I'll leave it at that and let the other uh, subcommittee members uh, join in if, if um, they want to. No, Jess, that was wonderful. You captured everything that we've worked on for the last uh, several months. So thank you. That was, that was a great presentation. I agree. Awesome job. Um, I do think that um, Mark Gardner wanted to comment on the curriculum. I don't know if this would be an okay for him time for him to do that. So just as a point of order, Heidi, um, when we, if it's about the district curriculum, it should be presented by either Jane Daly or the curriculum team or the content lead at, at, for social studies at middle and high school. So if it was about what you presented, that's fine. But if it's about something we're doing in the district, it really should come through that, through the lens of this. So it's a district wide perspective and not an individual perspective. Agreed. I really don't know what where he's going with it. He just mentioned it. So I, I don't know the answer to that. He just wanted to talk about something to do with curriculum. So I'm not really sure. I can, um, Mr. Gardner, just to double check it. Do you have a, a question about what you heard tonight? Because if it was, if, um, we're not at this point, if it was about what we're doing um, at in the district, it would be something that the district would present uh, for the for the entirety of the either the school committee and or the task force. Actually, I am here um, as an ambassador from the Rhode Island um, History and Social Studies Advisory Committee from the Rhode Island Department of Education. But that's not on the agenda, to... Mr. Garner. I just have to clarify because I really need to make sure we're, we're sticking to the agenda. So, um, well, I had emailed um, right, and we uh, have Jane, to... and yep. I just didn't know how to get onto the uh, agenda. So I emailed you and um, so and just Jane. To clarify, and if, we did have if, a slide. We had Ride present to the task force. So when it when it's regarding curriculum pieces for the district on behalf of either Ride or the district, that would come through myself. Okay. Well, um, as the ambassador from this um, from this committee, I just wanted to make the task force aware that the state is undertaking a very similar effort at um, revising the grade span expectations in history and social studies. Um, we've started that work last year. It's in response to a change in laws by the General Assembly in 2019. And I just, I had really just wanted to um, try to set up something where I could meet with the curriculum committee and just make them aware of what we're doing at the state level, where the work is there. It's not finished, it's still a work in progress. And um, I don't think that I need to do an entire pre presentation to the entire anti-racism task force. It's something that would be m more of interest to just the curriculum committee, subcommittee. So that would come through our curriculum team, Mr. Gardner. So please reach out to Ms. Daly. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay, go ahead, Maya. Well, thank you again. Um, Donna's had her hand. Yeah, oh, did you? I'm just, sorry. Really quickly, um, thank you, Jessica, for such a um, wonderful summary of our, of our conversations thus far. Are. Um, just to kind of go back and look at talking about resources and resources for um, educators, classroom educators, you know, um, educators are people who are doing that work outside of the classroom. I mean, there's a constellation of knowledge that is constantly interacting with our students, not just classroom educators. We want to provide that support with that full knowledge. Um, and so providing these kind of resources for our classroom educators um, primarily, um, it, we want to also include emphasis on the fact that we have an opportunity to teach about civics and tribal sovereignty um, here um, in uh, South County. 
which is not always an opportunity for, for many uh, counties um, and spaces across New England where there is not a federally acknowledged tribe. Um, so we don't want to, I mean, we want to build on a, a strong foundation of understanding the history of this place, uh, but we want to complicate that and also add to that um, knowledge as we kind of look at scaffolding and look at when students are going into high school and having um, a better understanding of civics. And I think for our curriculum uh, committee, we want to look at what it means to uh, produce a generation after generation of Terre Haute students who understand what nation to nation relationships mean for tribal nations in the United States. That uh, the United States is premised on treaties with, uh, with tribal, sovereign tribal nations and then that is uh, foundational to uh, our, our understanding as citizens of the United States, kind of more broadly, all of us here on this call. So I really, um, I think that there's direct applicability uh, here in our community. I look at these squares um, on, our, on, our, on our Zoom uh, feed here, and uh, we have that kind of uh, pertinent, uh, pressing information that is um, useful immediately at all times, not just kind of in the historical sense. Thank you, Andonis. Um, did anybody else um, have anything to add or any questions? Okay, um, we're gonna move on to the next agenda item, which is our school committee liaison report by Ms. Lisa. Thank you, Maya. Um, and, um, and, and Donis, when you said we want to complicate the story, I, I love that. I love that. It, it, it kind of threw me. Um, it, it's exactly right. So, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a minute. So um, two things I mentioned earlier that I just wanted to, to talk about um, as liaison to the school committee, but also um, from the from the perspective of the person who proposed th this committee um, and made the motion for that. And that's, uh, I recognize that in the past few weeks, there has been um, some very robust conversation happening online. Um, there has been some concerns that are living online in spaces that are not um, available to all of us to hear and, and to be able to converse with. And so I recognize that, that my role is to make sure that everyone feels welcome to this meeting and that may or may not um, have, have come across either at school committee mem meetings or, or in some of our initial meetings. So I asked the chair for space to formally state that we welcome community participa uh, participation and more clearly, I want to say that, that we welcome some dissent. We welcome a conversation. As Andana just said, we welcome complicated conversations. We're ready. We want to have them. And we don't want to have them to win them. We want to have them to work with you, to understand what the concern is, and then dismantle it and then reconfigure it in a way that shares the responsibility of anti-racism, right? In the way that shares the power of our committee and of our communities and of our school committee, because it belongs to the taxpayers, it belongs to our teachers, it belongs to our students, it belongs to everybody. Um, and so we do want you to participate. And so for those of you who've asked the questions, will they listen to us? Will our questions be answered? we've seen it, we're waiting. We're all looking for your hands to be raised. And this may not be the space. Let me also acknowledge, I'm an educator. I, I've done this work a long time. This may not feel like a space where you can do that. And that's okay. And if the school committee meetings itself, which is broader and may you may feel like has more representation of your point of view, that's where you feel more welcomed come and ask the questions. Because if, if the anti-racism task force understands the concerns, then we can, we can work towards that. Otherwise, right, we're working in a silo, one that is, right, has is pointed with the right moral compass that's through the, the lens of diversity, equity, inclusion as our mission states. We're on point, we're open, but we're working in the silo and we don't want to work in a silo. 
we can't change racist practices and systemic racism if we're in an echo chamber. And, you, and nobody else's point of view can change if, if they're in an echo chamber. We really do welcome and will consider all points of view. So it's really important that I take responsibility to say that this evening, um, that, that that is part of this process. And I'm, I'm not even looking at my notes, right? They're like gone now. I'm just speaking to all of you. Um, there are people on this call that are exceptional advocates. I have sat by their side and watched them advocate for students with disabilities from a, an elected position as well. I've watched them create advocacy and take down barriers for our children here in Charaho that have disabilities. And she's a rock star. The work of diversity, equity, inclusion includes children with disabilities, right? And so I know that there are skills and thoughts amongst all of our community members that can be applied to anti-racism because I've seen it applied to working around justice for, for kids with disabilities and special education. So I know there's common ground. I know that you're exceptional people. We just need a common understanding, but you are welcome here. Which leads me into shared definitions, which is the second thing I asked the chair to allow me to speak about tonight. It also occurred to me in being sent um, uh, lots of um, information about the conversations that have been happening that we might be saying the same words, but with different meanings and understandings. Boy, we're never gonna get together if that's happening, right? So the two words that seem to be triggering right now are decolonization and anti-racism. Um, anti-racism being misunderstood to be conflated with like BLM or politics and decolonization, if you're the descendant of someone from the Mayflower, that might sound a little intimidating. I recognize that. So thank you for all of those that, that shared that. That's why I've proposed that we have shared definitions on our website, what they mean to this group. Um, the way Andonis just spoke um, about how to integrate the, the curriculum and thread it through, I think the task force will do the best job of coming up with those terms. I, I, I don't think that that is my, my role, but I did wanna just at least for now, share two terms. And these are not any formal definitions on Wikipedia. This is just what it means in this group. So when we talk about anti-racism within this task force, we're acknowledging that racism exists across all cultures, all people across the globe. That this is not simply and only a white black issue. So racism happens within race, racial groups across the globe, within cultures. Anti-racism is understanding that those in a particular area that have had the racial power have made cis built systems, created laws, created education that met the needs of that racial group. And to be anti-racist is to decidedly work to, to balance that and to include and share the power and the resources and the stories amongst all racial groups. So in this context, anti-racism is about acknowledging that in this country, right, the, the hegemony, the power was whiteness and that all the systems were built in that image because those were the people who were in power and now they need to be um, changed, altered, included, but it's tough work and it needs action, clarity, and, and, and a lot of focus. So that's what we're doing in this space. The other one is decolonization. Again, I thank all of you who wrote online. Um, I'm not on Facebook, but luckily I was able to get to it. People send it to me. Um, yeah, decolonization sounds like it's taking from the D, taking away from, dis, you know, disconnecting from colonization. Rather, what this task force seeks to do um, is to provide a balanced narrative, right? So to take curriculum and instruction that is inclusive of all stories and all narratives. So for example, that the colonists were not the first settlers, right? And, and actually, and Donna said things far better than I could. So insert now everything Andana said. 
pause, review that tape. Okay, right? So that's part of it, right? That Europeans were not the only explorers. So, and I think Mr. Gardner might've been talking about this a little earlier, that when they're ta when we're taught about the Bering Strait, that we connect that back to, yeah, no, people were exploring thousands of years before Europeans started doing it. They were pushing on, on foot, by the way, not on boats and not with any type of technology on foot with babies strapped to their backs, right? So those were explorers, but we, we teach it in a silo. So kids learn the, the cool explorers were white Europeans and these other people walked across the street and it, it, that's decolonization. It's telling the whole narrative. And lastly, helping our students understand that Black history didn't start with enslaved people. And that there was, there is a world and kingdoms and right a whole existence, again, thousands and thousands of years before slavery. And so that's not where the story starts. That's a colonistic point of view. So that's decolonization. So when we talk about it in this group, we're talking about, and you just start with the curriculum presentation, right? We're talking about making sure our students, our Charaho students, when they enter the world, they're entering it with all of the information, not the information that we had because it's what we know. And so I hope this helps. I hope this starts the conversation. Um, and I hope that the website and the task force will come up. I think Joe Reddish has a few other ideas for us as to what other terms we might be missing. And I, and I do say it's our responsibility. We've asked for this task force. We volunteered for it. It is our responsibility to get those terms understood and on the website. So if there's a concern, everyone in the community has a place to point to and say, okay, but what do they mean? What does this force task force mean when they say this word, and don't look at Fox, and don't look at CNN, and don't look at right, Wikipedia, we'll tell you what we mean in this context, and then we can all move forward together as one community. And that is all, thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. There's, just like you uh, reflected back to in Dawn, there's so many times I say, you just pulled that straight out of my head, and, um, I'm very thankful that you said that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm also thankful that it's being expressed that we we do want to have transparency. We want we can't do this by ourselves. We're not meeting in a back room because thankfully we don't have to do that anymore. Um, that we are trying to be transparent. So I'm very very happy about the turnout tonight um, and the student um, at, uh, the students who continue to to greet, greet us, grace us, and give us their input. This is what it's about. This is um, exactly what this was started for. Um, and I know that's why I'm chair, so I'm not supposed to keep talking. So our next meeting date, according to the agenda, is going to be uh, April 7th. And um, now, I'd like to offer any sick, oh, Miss Weeks, is that your hand up? Yes, ma'am, go right ahead. Hi, I wasn't sure if we can, sorry, Nicole, try that again. You got, um, there we go. Okay, I wasn't sure if we were uh, like, people in the community were allowed to um, just make a comment. On anything on the agenda. Anything on the agenda, actually I wanted to kind of piggyback what Lisa said about um, those complicated conversations um, as a teacher in the building. I think people want to have conversations, complicated conversations, but don't know how to, and then get nervous at how to have it with students. So I love the idea of doing professional development, but maybe ongoing, meaningful, continual professional development, not just one and done, where we can practice and look at our own racism and bias and have those complicated conversations among our colleagues that we feel comfortable with. And then maybe, you know, um, to build that um, 
the dialogue and um, energy and confidence to then have it with students um, and be models of that how to have those conversations and saying them it's okay to ask it's okay to talk about it um, you know and so as an educator, I really believe that, you know, we have to model what we want, you know, we want students to engage in, um, but a lot of people just don't know how to have them. And I've had people come to me because um, I do the diversity book club with a couple of my colleagues and people are coming to us saying, I would like to join, but I don't know what to say, or I don't want to say anything wrong. <laughs> so if teachers are saying that, I don't know how, you know, I could see them you know, turning away from having those conversations with students. Thank That's you it. very much, Ms. Weeks. Uh, Dr. Tula, you can unmute yourself. Oh, I know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be another member of the community. Um, so before I say what I'd like to share, I think, Joe, Joe, you had, did you have your hand up earlier? I just want to make sure I make space if you did have your hand up earlier. Lopes, was that your hand that was up? Nope, but I'm getting a thumbs up. All right, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to check. Um, Nicole, I love what you said. It just added on to what I already wanted to say, so I want to I want to put it in my pocket so I can take it out. Um, so the first thing that I want to say is um, I invite you all to think about these complicated conversations conversations as courageous conversations because it takes a lot of courage to start to have them to start thinking about having those conversations to to step forward to someone and say hey can can i bring this up is this okay for me to discuss this or do you have a resource for this it's courageous and that it's important to know that um when you are being courageous you have great intentions, especially when you're being moral, ethical, and respectful. Um, and we welcome that here. I don't think anyone is going to put some letter on you if you say something and it happens to fall on the spectrum that we're trying to bring a lens towards. We invite you. Um, you know, I know many members on this, this task force personally, and I know they would not do that. <laughs> and that is not my intention. And I wouldn't allow for that. And I would not be here if that is something that would be done. So I want to say that. Um, and with that said, I also invite um, you all to look at the uh, Singleton Agreement, which, which talks about these four agreements um, to have these courageous conversations, which, in which includes staying engaged, um, expecting discomfort. So if you're coming in thinking that um, you're just going to have this fun conversation, and then you you happen to hear something that oh, that 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 was news to me. Um, if you come in knowing that there there might be some discomfort in the conversation because you, there's some things you're still learning, you're probably going to feel okay when it comes up. And then speaking your truth, your truth, bringing your story forward. Um, I think that's important and not bringing forward someone else's story um, and their name, <laughs> but you can bring someone's story forward without their name because we want to hear from them as well, right? We want to we want to take space and give space um, and also to expect and accept non-disclosure um, as awesome of, you know, these task force members are, our task is not to solve racism. So <laughs> you're going to come out of here feeling a little non-disclosure because we're not going to solve that. <laughs> that is not our task. And that's a heavy lifting. Um, so I wanted to say that. Um, and I also wanted to offer this. We are your task force. We are not the task force. We are your task force. We are your community members. We are here for you. So I want to say that. Um, it's not a us and them, it's a we, we're here for you, so we want to hear from you, seriously. Um, and, oh, I think that's it, because I already talked about the complicated conversations and inviting you all to say and think of it as courageous conversations. And as I mentioned, with us being community members, 
if you see us in Stop and Shop and you have a wonder about something, um, again, not trying to come to an agreement to what we should be discussing publicly and fairly with everyone with transparency, but you're wondering, hey, do you think this book is okay? Um, hey, I was wondering about this for myself or my family. Ask us a question. Again, we are your task force member. We are your community member. And I just wanted to make sure you knew that. We're here for you. Thank you, Dr. Ula. I, I see, I think I saw Ms. Thea's hand up. Did I see your hand up? Yes, thank you. <laughs> So I just had a, a question and just so I just to understand it a little bit better um, with the committees, I know that it's to make recommendations to the school committee, but kind of like Nicole Weeks was saying about um, that, like ongoing professional development or the actual curriculum changes that will occur. Will the task force be then making like specific recommendations or pulling together resources of, hey, this is a company or a person that can do a specific professional development training? Is that going to be, is that a goal of the task force or it's more, these are the recommendations and the school committee will have to um, be tasked with finding those things. Does that question make sense? It does make sense. Dan, I think this is. Yeah, I can I can cover it just from I can't speak for the curriculum committee, but from a, the practices and policies perspective, um, it was actually it was challenging to get them to fit on like the one slide just to have the, the very quick progress report so that we could have that thoughtful conversation with the school committee. But um, that is from like I know for the, like the practices committee, our Google Doc that we've been working on is you know, 15 pages of information. So we're, you know, obviously we need to organize and, and get that so it's in a thoughtful way. But our, um, and I'm interested in other thoughts, but our thought is as we actually write out thoughtful recommendations that they will have like the recommendations of what we want the, um, we hope the school committee considers, but also some actionable items and recommendations from professional organizations that you could lean on around how you could actively recruit and retain a diverse workforce or folks who do, you know, we know do some really incredible professional development. So I think that's a really good point from our perspective and, and policy and practices. We've been definitely having those very concrete examples. Um, so unless that is not our goal, and I'm, I'm looking at Lisa, Gina, um, but our yeah, thoughts are when we yeah. send that, that we would have some kind of actionable items, but yeah, go for it. So I'll start with reiterating sort of Maya, and I think I started recording later because I was renaming, helping rename task force members, but Maya at the very beginning, and I think I didn't record all of it. I didn't catch it at the beginning, but what she was talking about was sort of the purpose, so she should have sort of reset and explained that um, the task force is, is a task force created by the school committee to um, create the recommendations, similar to how you saw it tonight, which will go to the school committee for them to determine what actions taken. My, di my direction, the district direction, the direction that comes through curriculum practices and policies is taken from the school committee directive. And that's how they, then, it went, and then, then action will be taken. So I don't leave these meetings and do a list of recommendations that I hear about. My job is to capture that information, ensure that I, you know, with the task force members, the school committee gets and sees those recommendations and then they provide me with the next step and the direction of what actions to begin with. And I, they'll often ask for my, my ideas or my recommendations as will they ask for our educators, the community members that are on those calls, they'll want that feedback before taking that action. But they ultimately will determine the next steps of what happens. When it comes to like, hey, um, put this book in or um, get this PD, that can't necessarily happen exactly that way because we have state regulations around curriculum and Ryan actually presented to the task force so they were clear. And I've actually sent, um, and to Mr. Gardner's point, I've sent the entire task force when the, the new curriculum for the Board of Regents and what's on their agenda so they can see what the discussions are going on so that they can hop into those conversations if they choose. But in the end, um, there's also RFPs. We have to make sure we do those things appropriately and legally and how much cost and how does that look? It's, I can't just go, oh, I really like this. So we, ha we have to follow the rules, but that's where sort of myself and Lisa come in to sort of help support the task force to understand all that because this is new territory, the Open Meetings Act, following the agenda. So when we're having conversations um, during the task force, 
we, uh, really my goal being here is listening, uh, providing a, a clarification when asked or needed, and uh, to ensure that I can help sort of guide and support Maya and Dan as they navigate the chair and vice chair role along with, uh, and the least that's her, her support as well. Um, but th this is going to be something that it's okay for even uh, community members or task force to say, I have a question I want to talk about, is that okay? But the, the, the easiest thing to say is if it's, and we're actually going to bring legal counsel back now that you're all up and running a little bit more and, and things are getting closer to school committee. So he can sort of go over. So you can now ask more specific questions about the hows, the whys, and um, how this works. So we all do this uh, appropriately, transparently. So the community knows that um, we're doing our best to ensure that this is exactly what the school committee visions. And the nice thing about the March 9th meeting is when the first group goes, it'll give the com school committee really the first chance since creating the task force to say, hmm, this is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Or no, wait a minute, a little change over here. Or actually, I was thinking it was more of this. So that feedback is going to be important for the other two subcommittees. So I, I do think a smaller um, review is helpful for all of us to sort of think, uh, is this the right direction? Because it was really a big topic and that where we're working and dwindling it down. So I hope that uh, that provides some additional sort of guidance. I saw the thumbs up. So I think I think we're good, right, Miss Leah? Um, and I did see your hand up, Miss Laub. Um, did you take it down or? Okay. You're... Can we unmute her? Hi, everybody in the room. I, uh, this is my second time here. I'm going to jump in and start teaching this book um, with the help of Caleb Grant and Nicole Weeks and Joe Reddish. I've reached out to my colleagues at school, the admin and other teachers at the Met and at Hope High School, because this is the Read Across Rhode Island book. And I'm going to jump in. And I'm doing it starting March 11th. And I have a lineup of really interesting guests who are going to speak, including Keith Stokes, civic uh, historian from Newport about um, some of his ancestry actually. I've got um, officer uh, Dan Kelly from the Richmond Force and I've got Sergeant, um, Joe Pendleton coming in and having a conversation based on ideas in this book, which are standards based. We've got it all connected to curriculum. And I wanted to invite anyone in this room to email me. You can find me on staff at the English uh, department at the high school. And um, if you wanna come in and listen to some of these conversations, you're welcome to do that. We want to. I'm sorry, this is so wonderful, but I want to make sure just because now I feel like the Open Meetings Act, please. Okay, I was nervous to bring it up, but I'm jumping in. I know, and, I, and oh. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, can you connected it to the curriculum? And so I, I you know, I'm trying to, and I'm, I'm watching the thread. So just to be clear, it wasn't on the agenda. So I don't want to make it look like only if you came, you knew that this was going to be discussed. Um, but. Mr. McKenzie, you know, talk with him about sort of sharing it, you know, uh, how the high school blog, you know, Andrea's blog and how you can share that with the high school community, just similar how Interact does it so that we, we follow um, the guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. And Mrs. Oh. Love, thank, thank you for welcoming the community with your presentation as well, Gina, right? We hit that one. Katie, you have your hand up. Yes, I don't. I know I don't need to raise my hand, but I do just to show that I have a thought. So I just wanted to circle back really quickly and not keep us too over time, but just clarify to um, what Lisa shared about two definitions. Are you also welcoming um, or when and how is the best time and approach to suggest other terms that I think need to be included? Because I've brainstormed just a little list in our conversation here. Um, about um, terminology that I think would be critical moving forward, because if one can't understand the, or can't keep up with the conversation based on really 
intense and important terminology, then they might check out or just choose to, you know, throw something at what we're saying because they don't quite understand it. Um, so I, I didn't know what the best way to, to do that is to share some terms that I think are, are important for us to um, get on the same page about and offer to the community. I love that you're taking notes. Um, there's, there's so much about this task force that just brings me so much um, encouragement. So my suggestion is that, that this, that I know Joe has, um, Joe and I talked, you know, he's really based on his experience kind of at the statewide has some terms as well. I suggest um, that is really the website topic. So I would give it to Maya and Gina. Like I, I, I think is at the pace that Gina wants to get the website up and running, um, a, a simple consensus amongst the task force. Because in that case, Katie, and my, my thought is there's, there's no, no such thing as too little information. So if you put more terms than anybody else thought was necessary, well, great, right? So it's, it's not a matter of having too many terms. It's a matter of making sure that the definition is the definition shared by this task force, right? And not a definition extracted from um, something that, that there is an agreement about. So my thought is, um, because you all already have so much to do, that make it, um, send suggestions to Maya and Gina, and then make it, and I think it's your next item on this agenda, future agenda items, then they can compile that list, bring it back to the task force. So that means anyone who has a definition they think should be up there, throw it up there, let the chair and the superintendent do some work for you. That's part of the job, right? The chair and the super, sometimes they just do and more I, work. Than the that's what happened was I, I would present, because then the school committee would have to say this, yes, we're gonna adopt and approve these definitions. Oh as right. part of the district-wide work of this committee. So it would be similar to how you saw Dan present the slides on the, we recommend this be the definition and then I would then, or someone from the committee task force, however we wanna do it, we would present either like a draft proposal of the webpage with those included. And then the school committee would then provide direction on how they wanna work through those adoptions. Right, right. So, but but I don't know if you agree that, if you agree that send just starting to send those terms over and letting you and Maya consolidate them is better than waiting for another meeting, waiting for the meeting, because that's not that's not group work. That's individual members saying, I think this is an important term. Right. And then you'll come back with the with a list. That, that's my and then like you just said, have done and, and follow the OMA. Uh, and and like you just said, Lisa, um, like we could add like going over these definitions with the group to a future agenda item so that we can all, then it would be presented to the school committee and voted on whether or not. Okay. I, I am following. Uh, Jess, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to, uh, I, you know, I'm fully in support of the uh, agreed upon definitions and presenting that information to the community. I just wanna be mindful as well that, um, when we when we set the definitions and we speak to these topics that we don't do it in a way that's like overly academic because it needs to be accessible so I don't know if that's part of it as well is coming to an agreement that sure we'll define these terms but when we're speaking about some of these uh issues that it's in an accessible way <laughs> so that's a great point Jess I, we need to make it so it's understood by everyone. And I would agree based on my experience, limited experience in kind of museum world and others can chime in that have much more experience. I think there's agreed upon reading level um, to ensure accessibility. And I don't recall the exact grade level or age, but it, I felt like it was somewhere around 12 um, years old if I'm not mistaken, but I could confirm um, and I completely agree. Yeah, I mean, a perfect example is, is the term BIPOC. I mean, a lot of people don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's on my list. For, uh, Miss Virginia. Oops, there we go. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to um, thank and commend all of the task force members tonight and Lisa from the school committee. Um, this is really like gritty stuff sometimes. So I thank you for coming out. And I know 
there was a lot of anxiety going into it this week with some of the negativity. So I really thank and commend you for coming out tonight. Thank you for coming out tonight. <laughs> oh, good evening. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we knew what we were going to be up against. <laughs> we're coming anyway. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grant, I see your hand. Okay. <laughs> All right. See. Raising the roof. See what you started, Mr. Lopes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that is a um a beautiful segue into future agenda item uh, recommendations. Um, how would you, I'm assuming that you would like to word something for a future agenda item, Katie? Uh, yes, I would like to suggest for a future agenda item, we draft a list of terms and potential definitions for discussion. Accessible definitions. I'd like to second that. And that was you, Mr. Lopes, that seconded? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, then I guess we'll go ahead for a vote. Discussion. Oh, let's discuss. Thank you. All right, Chair, so, so just two, two points to the agenda item. Um, I, I appreciate Katie's thoughts on accessibility, of course. Um, my, other, my other world is disability rights. I, I just want to clarify for the community that when she says that the common age is 12, year, 12 years old, um, that that's actually across all genres for all people, right? So newspapers are supposed to be printed like that, Newsweek, like all of the, the best top journalism, like the most, in, you know, the best writers write our new sources at that level. So I, I wanted to make sure the community understood that when that was quantified in terms of grade age level, that that is the standard for all journalism at the highest level. So um, just to be clear that people are in this, this field don't think like we feel that is the age level by which we have to write anything. It is how we consume information as well. We consume news and journalistic information for the community at that level. It's only in published academic journals that it's different. Um, so need that, I think that needed to be clarified. So on my, just to clarify, uh, we, the agenda items can't be discussed because they're future. So it's just what people would recommend. And then- I recommend that we, when we talk about accessibility, that we just call it accessibility. Um, and Lisa, can I just add something yeah. to what you just said? As mm -hmm. a firm, as a former journalist, you are absolutely right. What you just said. Thank you, Mr. Lopes. I, I need to hear that once in a while. Um, oh, the other point about the future that agenda item. Um, while preparing that, if um, all of all of the members that have the ability to reach out and find out what those terms are from the community as well. I knew that those two terms were of concern, but as you're developing this agenda item, yes, we have some in our head, but unless we know those words that are upsetting or concerning or causing fear in our, our community members, then we're still only gonna be hearing ourselves. So those of you out there, please contact the chair via um, the, uh, or the school, the superintendent through the email that's published on the website and send in terms right, for this agenda item. Um, otherwise, we're, we're doing the same thing. We're just saying what we think you need to hear, but we want you to tell us what terms need to be better defined. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for always keeping me on track. Does anybody have any other uh, discussion as, as far as the terms are concerned? So now we vote. Now we vote. Um, okay, all of those in favor for having uh, the terms and the potential definitions um, brought to our, uh, put on our agenda. Okay, I have one, two, three. Any opposed?
Thon, I can't see your hand. So if you could just chime in if if you are in favor of. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, that was unanimous. And does anybody else have any recommendations for uh, future agenda items? You know, we normally have a standing um, item for our, our committees to report out. Um, but since uh, when we meet again in early April, two of our, our committees will have, um, you know, provided an update to the school committee. So I think maybe a, a touch point about that. And I, I know the, the school committee, the work groups will have to take all that feedback back to really incorporate it, but just kind of a, a touch base there, I think. Maybe a debrief, the answer, like a debrief of the feedback. Yeah, a debrief of school committee feedback <laughs> or, or report out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, for, for our next meeting is going to be on the 7th, so. So both okay, so policy, the and policy and practices, practices. yep, we'll it will be a week time. ahead of time for uh, curriculum week. And, okay, you know, so maybe, a, are, so are you um, suggesting that those two, since those they would have already, okay, um, so do you want to rephrase it so we can, when I write it down, it makes sense. Um, Sure. Yeah. Um, so a report back from policy in the practices work group um, or a debrief from those two work groups about the progress report that was submitted to the school committee in March. Does anybody want to second, Dan? I'll that? second that. Thank you, Joe. Uh, wait, I did that backwards. No, I didn't. Uh, any discussion on that motion. There can't be any discussion on um, future items. No discussion. Yeah, I was just testing you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. All of those in favor, please raise your hand. And Dawn, you can chime in. I'll hear you. Yes. And any opposed? Oh. No. That looks unanimous as well. And are there any other future agenda items? A question for Gina. Um, can we have a public comment section added for items that will be discussed throughout the evening? Wait, wait. Um, I'm asking for. Uh, right, so that it's officially on there. Sure. Then I would move that we have a standing um, agenda item that allows for public comment on agenda items that were discussed. Joe, just to clarify, um, stating it at the very beginning? At the end, because they, they're not going to be able to discuss them if we right. haven't talked about them. Perfect, because I know the school committee does public comments at the beginning for things not on the agenda, but for the task force, that can't happen because it's a different kind of committee. So right. we'll do it at the end. Thank you. So you're so that is for at the end of the agenda, the right. open open forum for right. discussion. Okay. Yeah. Anybody going to second that? I'll second that. Thank you, Dan. And um, all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I don't see any. Okay, so that was unanimous. Are there any other uh, suggestions for future agenda items? I don't see any. I do, however, see Ms. Laub's hand raised. Thank you. If I may, I'm wondering if under policy, it could be undertaken to make a public statement, um, making a public statement about racial incidents that happened in this, that happened in the state um, as they happen so that this body is recognized as being of one voice when it comes to anti-racist um, events, which could be controversial throughout the state. I'm, I'm 
thinking of one in particular that's going on now in Barrington. But I wonder if that's something that's within the bailiwick of this of this body. So um, that's a policy. Clarify because I, the committee has already asked that. And uh, future agenda items is um is an item for the task force to discuss. Just to clarify, but just to answer your question, Ms. Love, uh, it would have to be very specific so the public is very clear about what it is that we are discussing. I I would just caution that we don't want to become a political um, organization, but we should discuss public you know incidents but only in the realm that it relates to how we move forward um there is the commission on prejudice and bias which i said is chair we we usually address many of those things um at our state level but i would think we want to focus really on our community thank you If there are no other suggestions for future agenda items. I would move no, to adjourn. but I have a, I have oh. a question. Sorry, I know we need to adjourn. We have a standing item to acknowledge of acknowledgement. Is that correct? So would that fall in there? Nope, Gina said no. No. Okay. Part of my responsibility to you is to ensure that legal reviews all the, the recommendations and we, you, you can't just put a standing current events because the public needs to know because you're, you're a body created by the sub school committee. So you come with additional guidance and guidelines. They have to know specifically what's the event you're going to discuss. Right. Don't. My question is, what is it that we proposed last week that was about acknowledgement? And is that something that we have for our meeting? Last, so last meeting, I, I think I was the one who proposed it specifically because in January, for example, our meeting was on January 6th, a lot happening in the world. We weren't able to talk about it, it wasn't on an agenda. So it came up as let's recommend, let's talk about current events, Gina brought that back to legal counsel and they said we could do it only if it was something super specific. So I think the caveat there, we can't have a standing item that says current events, but we could have an item, let's say there is something that just happened, you know, before we're finalizing an agenda or, or you know, the timing I think is the, the weird part. If something happened yesterday, we couldn't talk about it today because we couldn't put it on our agenda, but we could say next month, this specific thing, if I'm hearing that right, Gina. Oh yeah, Dad Tula, so what we're gonna do is uh, as one of the agenda items upcoming, um, I wanna say for April, but I'll double check, was that the, um, the, chair, the chairperson of the school committee recommended that the, I think I mentioned at the beginning that legal counsel return to review the Open Meetings Act and the, the how, the why, what's the best way to do this? What gets me in trouble? What doesn't get me in trouble? What can we do? How, now that you're up and running and you're, and you're getting, um, you know, you've got some time under your belt now. So now th things come up. So we want to make sure that we give you good guidance and that um, we keep everybody, you know, on the task force safe from concerns so this way we'll bring back legal counsel to talk about that. Gina, a question. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, can the things be added to the, even though we're voting to put these on the agenda now, can things be added to the agenda before the next meeting without a task force vote? You would I would go through either, I would go through my, um, uh, and it should, I should be copy because I have to run the agendas um, part of the chair's request is that I want all agendas by legal counsel and our open meetings act. Uh, my, my secretary coordinator who is trained um, and retrained every year around OMA to review to ensure. So she has a good eye to say this isn't clear enough for me. So I need, right. I would need X, Y, and Z. So we review it. And then um, usually if there's like, for example, the current events, I reached back out to Dan and Maya and explained what could or couldn't and why. Okay, so that's a uh, that's a yes with timeliness. Uh, it's a week. I it's would a week before. before. You know, the Monday prior to the um. Okay. The pre previous week, not the Monday before the meeting, but like so, two Mondays is usually a good barometer for to get that in, so Donna has time to put everything together. Right. And I just want to clarify that I asked because I know when you spoke, there were still some everyone wasn't here some community members were still coming in and some are coming out some joined from the last meeting some may be starting from this meeting so just to make sure that those who might have heard or had an understanding from the prior meeting and those who might have joined a little later had a good understanding so it was more so to make sure that there was some understanding so thank you so much gina 
we're so lucky to have her. <laughs> I feel like the OMA police. <laughs> oh, it's helpful though. It's very helpful. Okay, Joe, you're on. I would move that we adjourn. I'll second we have that. a second. <laughs> we have, we have a second. So we are adjourning at. No, you got to call the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. All of those in favor to adjourn tonight's meeting. Hey, Thon. Anybody object? Okay, that's unanimous. Have we a great are, night. We are adjourning at 8.58. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.